and welcome back to my let's play of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, today we're just continuing the main story quest uh, after we finished off with Ifrit uh, last time at the Bowl of Embers. So uh, let's get the show on the road. Until not so very long ago, you were but one of the many adventurers seeking to make their way in Eorzea. But for your character and courage, you were raised to the esteemed post of Envoy. Thereafter, you travelled the realm, aiding those in need without thought of reward, confirming to Eder and Papalimo that the Scions would benefit from your aid, and no sooner had you joined us than you personally bested the primal Ifrit. You've achieved a great deal in a short time, and won fame in so doing. Alas, fame does not come without a price, as you will soon discover. We have guests, Elric. Or rather, you have guests. Beg pardons. Ah, Lady Minfilia. Radiant as always. I am given to understand that the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have but recently welcomed a new hero into their midst. I am here on behalf of the Maelstrom. Grand Company of Limsa Liminsa to offer our said hero a place of honour within our ranks. As you can see, Elric, your recent exploits have garnered you the attentions of the Grand Companies of Eorzea. Each organisation would have Ifrit Spain for its own. To this end, all three have sent officers to court you. They would not ordinarily go to such lengths to enlist a new recruit. That they have is evidence of their high regard for you. I find myself wondering how word of Elric's deeds spread so quickly. That the immortal flames should know of his triumph is to be expected. But what of the other grand companies? Eep. Yes. Your reputation precedes you, Master Fandrel. Tis no ordinary man who can face a primal and emerge the victor. And imagine our pride when we learned that you began your journey as an adventurer in your own Gridania. Know that the people hold you in high esteem and that you will always be welcome among us. The Order of the Twin Adder has need of valiant men such as you. Join your strength to our friend, and together let us ensure that peace ever reigns over the Twelves Wood. What a pleasure it is to finally meet you, Master Fantrell. My comrades speak of you in the most glowing terms. A man of your talent belongs with the Immortal Flames. Join your strength to our friend, and together let us secure a prosperous future for Uldar. The Admiral was not exaggerating when she said you have the look of a hero. How often does she speak of you, friend? It is only natural that we should want you for the Maelstrom. Join your strength to ours, and together let us see the Grand Vessel of Limsa Liminsa to the shores of glory. <laughs> Looking a bit overwhelmed there. Lady Minfilia. Uh, very well. Though I am quite sure you need no reminding, mayhap a brief summary of the situation would help to clarify your thoughts on this matter. As you know, the Grand Companies are all-encompassing organisations, empowered to call upon the martial, economic and technological resources of their respective city-states in times of strife. There are presently three such organisations in Eorzea, the Maelstrom of Limsa Liminsa, the Order of the Twin Adder of Gridania, and the Immortal Flames of Uldar. Serving a Grand Company means serving the nation to which it belongs. You will be charged with its defence, and tasked with advancing its cause. In return for your faithful service, you will be furnished with various rewards, some of which may well prove useful to you in your other endeavours. If you are agonising over which of the Grand Companies best deserves your loyalty, be at ease. The commitment you make this day need not be permanent. Should you wish to shift your allegiance at a later date, you are entitled to do so. And yet, I concede that it is no small choice you face. Ah, a thought occurs to me. You will of course recall that the three city-states are planned to hold remembrance services. Well, as part of the proceedings, I am given to understand that the leader of each grand company will deliver an address. Hearing these addresses ought to help you make an informed decision. What say you, my dear officers? A fine suggestion. You are as wise as you are beautiful, my lady. Very well. Let Elric here, our leader, speak, then return here with his decision. We eagerly await your answer.
<laughs> I know full well that adventurers are by their nature a liberty-loving breed, and not best suited to the discipline of military service, but I strongly urge you to join a grand company nonetheless. While the promise of reward is enticing in itself, it is not the only benefit. You are possessed of great power, Elric, and with it you are capable of doing untold good. Yet know that great power is wont to attract attention, not all of it friendly. There will be those who wish you ill, and you must needs be on the lookout for them. Yet however vigilant you are, you are but one man in the midst of a grand company, however. You will be one man amongst many, a friend amongst friends. Your achievements will be shared, and so will the danger. I can think of no better arrangement. Of course, joining one organisation need not mean leaving another. I hope that we can continue to rely upon your aid. The Twelve know that we will have need of it in the days ahead. The Grand Company seek to protect their own nations. We Scions, on the other hand, seek to preserve the future of Eorzea as a whole. Similar, yet not quite the same. Now then, I expect that you will be afield more often in the future. As such, I would have you carry the Slink Pearl with you at all times. It will allow us to stay in touch regardless of location. Eosia is changing, Elric, and you have the power to help shape it anew. None can say what the morrow will bring, but so long as we believe in ourselves, there's no we cannot achieve. Now it is time you made ready for your journey. Before you depart, be sure to speak to Tataru. She will apprise you as to where and when the Remembrance Services are due to take place. Right, uh, I think they want me to speak with these guys to help uh, decide on the Grand Company. When the Admiral speaks, even pirates listen, and that is no small thing. She is a bone leader, the kind one would gladly follow to the Seventh Hell. Uh, Flame General is a passionate man, and his words never fail to light a fire in the belly of those who listen. I am sure you will be no exception. The Elder Seatia speaks only truth, and her words have the power to touch the soul. At the sound of her voice, all fall silent and attend her. Okay, that's interesting, although I'm getting the feeling those weren't the speeches that it actually intended me to hear. Uh, let's move to Tara, I guess she's outside. Right, uh, let's have a quick look now on the map. Uh, okay, so are you... Uh, alright, she's completely outside, okay. <laughs> I, um, I'm sorry about all the attention you're getting, Elric. I might have sung your praises a little too loudly, and often, to a few too many people. Ahem. Next time, I'll be sure to hold my tongue, literally if necessary. Anyway, I expect you want to know where and when the Remembrance Services are taking place. If all goes to plan, Gradania's Grand Company, the Order of the Twinada, will hold the first of the three services, and Elder Seedseer Kani Senna will deliver her address at Miketo's Amphitheatre. I should probably mention at this point that due to the organisational challenges involved in assembling all of the involved parties, it's possible that the Order of the Services might change. Still, there's not much we can do about that, so make Gradania your first port of call. Next, you'll need to go to Uldar, where Flame General Rauban Aldin will be addressing the masses at the Royal Promenade. Oh, and it's rumoured there's to be a special guest. How exciting. Last but not least, you must make your way to the stateroom in Limsa Liminsa, where Maelstrom Chief Admiral Milwe Bluffswain will be giving her address. The room is accessible via the Admiral's lift. Identify yourself to the sentry Zanfail, and he will admit you. Got all that? Well, off you go then. I hope you find the Remembrance Services suitably educational. I suggest visiting the city-states in my prescribed order, though with your record of impeccable timing and luck, the schedule may well change in favour of your preferred travel plans. Farewell. Okie dokie. So, uh, it's off to Gridania. Hopefully we'll have enough time to fit all three of these into uh, the one episode, as that would make uh, quite a tidy little package. <laughs> so, where do we need to go here? I think she said Miketo's Amphitheatre, didn't she? Yes, there it is.
I lost my son to the Calamity. The three Seed Seers are all together. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Our forebears were once strangers in the Twelveswood. Fearful of the green wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gradania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Do you see the Gridanian standard? There, hanging behind the Elder Seed Seer. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizan. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the Elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves, nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its War of Conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance, that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixul have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could the walk the high roads Ixul. without fear. On this day, Five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell?
The destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children. Woods will be done. It's up to us to protect the forest. All the elementals. If you'll permit me, Alfie No. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. The Gridanians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Ixal are unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition and want to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Silver Spy contrast are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent, and have long been on friendly terms with the Gridanians, until recently at least. Alas, they have grown aloof, a change observed at roughly the time they summoned the primal Ramu. The Gridanians have no love for war, and they consider open conflict a last resort. Though they clash with the Ixal ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self-defence. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. The Twelve's Wood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the wood, and thereby the power of the Elementals, will put an end to their woes. Yet how long will that take? Centuries, I'd wager. Meanwhile, the Ixal continue their incursions, spurred on by Garuda and her insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gridanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to all out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How valuable might the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them then? Well, perhaps we will find out, if the Elder Seedseer's words fell on fertile ground. So uh, that's the one in Gridania attended. Now we shall go to Uldar, followed by Limsa Liminsa. Mm, I'm doubtful that we'll be able to get all three services into one episode, so we might overlap a little bit, or we might let this be an exception to the usual 30 minute time slot, just uh, because it follows the story a little bit more nicely this way. Um, we'll decide a little bit later on after we see how long the uh, Uldar party takes up.
Behold, tis the Sultana Nanamo herself! And Roban as well! Hark you, souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore! Hurrah! Rauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold, where by the grace and glory of Naldhar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered, I speak of Ulda! There, at the Flame General's back flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, None spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. Rah! So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided downtrodden and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garleans make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you! Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames. Seek not to prosper from Ulda, but to restore her to prosperity. As the realm prospers, so shall Ulda. As Ulda prospers, so shall her people. Ya yeah, for Ulda! Together we are one. Your grace. Raoban? People of Ulda, I, Nanimo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Ulda lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulda, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. 
Long live Nanamo! Glory to the Sultana! For victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! Forsooth! The time is now! I believe! I fancy believe. meeting you again. The Uldans have a long history of conflict with the Amalja, the beast tribe that worships the primal Ifrit. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it you have encountered them. The Uldans do not shy from confrontation. If what threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he is stoked to life? Yet he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quiet these past five years, the Garleans have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Uldar has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanate's coffers are bottomless, and even assuming they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Amal Jar are summoning him with ever increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Uldan send their forces to smite the Primal, and though they invariably succeed, each victory is bought with blood. It is a war of attrition which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder then that the Immortal Flames are eager to recruit more members. At such a desperate hour, an adventurer of your experience would be a most welcome addition to their ranks. Right, so uh, that's theirs done. Uh, we're actually at the half now mark now, but I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get the Limsa Lemincin ceremony done as well. Yet to attend the Remembrance Service? Be quick, the Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. The Garleans are another matter altogether! So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed!
As the Admiral mentioned in her address, Limsa Liminsa is plagued by two beast tribes. The first are the fish like Sahagin, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the kobolds, who dwell beneath the earth and take the primal titan for their god. As if the beast tribe's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Garleans have also chosen to erect a fortress right in the Lemincens' backyard. And that's to say a note of internal strife. As a nation of pirates, there's no end to the blood feuds between the various factions, and while they fight amongst themselves, the Garleans wet their blades and watch. If the Lemincens are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside, and the primal threat dealt with once and for all. To this end, I expect they will soon take decisive action against the beast tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom standard will be drenched a deeper shade of crimson ere long. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. Elric, this is Minfilia. You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final remembrance service has now concluded? A moment ago, you say? What a coincidence. Jesting aside, I trust you remember our guests from the Grand Companies. Well, delighted though we are to have them here at the Waking Sands, it would not do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Welcome back, Elric. Were the Grand Company leader's words as illuminating as you had hoped? Aye, each nation is beset with problems. I trust you see now why your services are in such demand. Would that there were more of you, Elric. But you must be tired from your journey. Why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind is made up, pray give the Grand Company officers your answer. Complete that. The gods only know what grand company our adventurer friend will keep. Hm. The wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Well, of course they were standard waving rallies. Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the beast tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I mean to find it. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say, we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. M m my lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew.
Right, um, let's make our decision quickly. Uh, I believe it's the Immortal Flames I want to join, so we'll have a quick word with these guys. Welcome back, adventurer. I take General Rauban's words kindled a fire within you. Yes, I want to join them. Excellent. I feared that the incident with the traitor may have soured your opinion of us. It gladdens me to see that isn't the case. But before you can count you as one of our own, you must be formally inducted into our ranks. Um, right, that's fine by me, but uh, we're going to leave that till uh, next episode, as this one's already overran by quite a bit thanks to the cinematics. So uh, we'll see you guys next time.